Hey guys, I'm Dave with Thrill Gallery. Today, we're going to replace the vintage stand from my benchtop drill press. My old stand has been around for about 25 years, and while it does a good job holding the drill press, the case is pretty much a junk collector. Let's see how we can make it more user friendly. This is my current stand. While I like the small footprint, the height, and the mobile base, the storage isn't very useful. And the open bottom is just a place to collect junk that I should probably toss. When I built it, I included a pull-out shelf that never really worked well. Things get tossed in there for no particular order and often never to see the light of day again. If you're like me, you have a few scraps of plywood kicking around. I've been thinking about this rebuild for a while, and I really have to get rid of some of this scrap, so I guess it's a good time to start. With a plywood blade on my table saw, I started by breaking down the pieces of 3 quarter inch ply to their rough dimensions. Switching over to a rip blade, I grabbed some 3 quarter inch maple and ripped down several strips at about 3 sixteenths of an inch. I used these for solid wood edge banding on the parts of the case that'll show. I only need four, so naturally I ripped down about eight of them. You know, just in case. I took those strips over to my planer to clean up the saw marks. Since the stock is so thin, I clamped a secondary table to the planer table and ran the pieces through until I got them to their final thickness of an eighth of an inch. I set up my clamps wide enough to hold both side pieces, added a bead of glue onto the maple edge pieces, and taped them in place. The tape is there to hold the strip centered on the plywood. This allows little overhang on both sides, ensuring that the edges are fully covered. The two pieces are clamped together for a good bond across the edge. I repeated this for the other edge as well, but I ended up cutting the back off later. Once the glue had time to dry, I cleaned off the excess strips with a palm router and a flush trim bit. A panel this large is a little awkward to hold by hand, but I don't have a fancy bench to clamp things to... yet. Using a straight edge cutting guide, I trimmed one end of each panel square to the long side. Then I clamped the two pieces together and cut them at the same time, again making sure that my edge guide was square to the long sides. With the sides cut to size, it was time to begin the joinery. I put my dado set in my table saw, set the height for 3 eighths of an inch, and set the fence for the first shelf groove. I ran both pieces, stood back, and realized I had just made the wrong cut. I put a 3 eighths inch dado, but this groove should only be a quarter of an inch wide. Time to clean up and call it a day. Not only did I cut the groove too wide, but the crappy plywood that's currently available for a reasonable price shows all kinds of tear out. While I prefer Baltic birch, I'd rather not pay $120 for a sheet. And since this is the inside of shop furniture, I guess I'll live with it. Now to fix those grooves. I ripped down some poplar strips to a finished dimension just over 3 eighths of an inch square. Then I took those strips over to the planer and took several light cuts until the strips were a snug fit in the grooves. Before gluing the strips in, I prepared two calls with some tape so they wouldn't stick to the repair. Then I could add a bead of glue into the groove, tap the strips in place, and place the calls on top and clamp them down. A few passes with my block plane and a quick sanding and the face is smooth. The last step was to trim off the excess strips with my pull saw, and we're ready to start the joinery all over again. With a 3 8 inch stacked dado set back on the table saw, and the fence set so that the far side of the blade is the width of the 3 quarter inch ply, I cut the grooves for the back panel in both sides. Then I reset the fence and cut the grooves for the bottom as well. At my miter saw, I cut two pieces to size. Now I'm not sure if I'll need two shelves yet, but I'd just as soon have cut them at the same time just in case. 
While I was there, I also cut the back. Did I mention how well this stock takes a cross cut? I'm not sure why I chose to cut the rabbits with the stock standing up. It's not the best way, and it's not the way I usually do it, but it worked. I would normally attach a sacrificial fence to the saw fence, partially bury the dado blade, and run the stock so it was face down on the table. That's much more stable than the way I did it here. With that said, I still managed to run the two shelves and the back, giving me a snug fit into the grooves on the sides. Reducing my dado set to a quarter of an inch width, it was time to cut the grooves for the drop panels. The first groove will sit with the top of the groove two and a half inches below the top stretchers. After running both sides, I adjusted the fence, giving me two and a half inches between the first groove and the second. Then I repeated this process until I had cut all five draw grooves on both sides. Switching from shorts and a t-shirt to jeans and a sweatshirt, I realized I didn't like the grooves showing on the back of the side pieces, so I ripped the back strip off the table saw. Since I had milled a few extra strips, I glued two onto the sides I had just cut down. The process was the same as before. Glue, tape, and clamp. The only difference is I set a thin strip of stock across the clamps to slightly elevate the panels. This helped keep the strips centered on the sides. Once the glue had dried, it was time to trim off the excess. Since there are grooves in one face, you can't use a router and a trim bit there. So I grabbed my low angle block plane and shaved down the strip the old fashioned way. The other side can be cleaned up with the router as before. And one nice thing about a do-over is you sometimes remember a trick to help out. It's like using a parallel clamp to hold tall stock in place. I just use a couple of quick grip clamps to clamp the parallel clamp to my work table and clean up that long edge. To clean up the ends, I chose my flush cut saw this time around. The teeth are not as aggressive, so it's a bit easier to control when cutting small pieces like this. A quick sanding cleaned up the panels and their new edge trim. When cleaning up the interior face, and I use that term loosely, I find it easier to run the sander parallel to the grooves. If you try to work perpendicular, the discs can dip and grab into the grooves. I got things as smooth as I could and reminded myself that it's the inside of a cabinet that will never be seen. To make as much work for myself as possible, I decided to mill a piece of maple for the front bottom lip. It was about 7 eighths of an inch thick and I ripped it down to 1 and 3 quarters of an inch wide. The next step was to create a rabbit for the bottom panel to sit in. I set the blade to half the depth of the stock and the fence so that the far side of the blade was the width of the three quarter inch plywood. I reset the blade height and the fence to complete the rabbit, sneaking up on the blade height until it just met the first cut. Moving over to the miter saw, I squared one end of the maple and then cut it to match the width of the bottom panel again sneaking up on the cut until it was just right. Since the maple trim had to match the bottom profile, I used my miter gauge with a stop on it. When I set the stop location, I lifted it off the table with a thin piece of scrap. This would ensure that the stop wouldn't catch on the table during the cut. Again, I snuck up on the blade height, then worked from the outside of the cut, then moving the stop closer to the stop block nibbling away at the material. Then I could flip the stock around and repeat on the other side, ensuring that the ends matched. Now I could carefully glue the maple trim pieces to the bottom plywood. I made sure to check repeatedly to ensure that the edges lined up and everything was where it needed to be. Then I set it aside to dry. I laid the bottom on one of the sides, aligned the front faces, and marked the back of the shelf where it needed to be cut. Then I took it over to the miter saw, transferred that mark to the underside, and cut it to length. Then I brought it back to the side to make sure that the length was correct. After dry fitting the case together, I could mark my top stretchers for length. I made sure to measure from the rear of the case, as the front could be off at this point. 
I took the two pieces over to the miter saw and cut them to length at the same time. Once the fit was just right, it was time for joinery. I grabbed my vintage Craig pocket hole jig and drilled four pocket holes in each of the stretchers. The rear stretcher got two on the back and one in each end. The front stretcher got two on each end. Well, it did eventually. While I had the jig out, I cut three pocket holes in the underside of the bottom where it'll attach to the case back. Before assembly, I took the time to tape off the lower area of the inside of the case to ease in cleaning up the glue. I'm not as worried where the draws will be as they won't be seen. Then I could apply a bead of glue to one of the side grooves and tap the back in place, making sure that it was even at the top and the bottom. Then I added glue to the other side panel, including the bottom groove. A little more glue on the first side before sliding the bottom in place and then adding the second side. This took a bit of juggling to get the back and the sides lined up, as well as the front edges of the bottom. But when I was happy with the alignment, I added clamps. Lots of clamps. Before moving forward, I checked the top and the front were square. Happy with that, I could add the top stretchers. A little glue on the ends and the back of the rear stretcher, and I clamped it in place while I added the inch and a quarter coarse pocket hole screws. The front stretcher only got glue on the ends, and again I clamped it in place while I added the pocket hole screws. I gone back and forth on adding an edge treatment to the front stretcher, and after seeing it in place I decided it needed it. I cut a piece to length, added some glue, and taped it in place, keeping the bottom as flush as possible. Then just in case I added a call and a couple of clamps to hold things in place. Once the case had had time to dry, I went back and added pocket holes to the bottom shelf. I had planned to only fasten the bottom to the back, but since the front trim came off during assembly, I added a few screws here to hold that in place as well. Remember how I mentioned that I don't like to run my rabbits with the panel standing against the fence? Well, this shows why. Each time the piece wiggled or dipped, it caused these gaps along the back. A little putty will hide them, but had I cut them correctly in the first place, it wouldn't be necessary. With the case done, I could focus on the five drawers. I started by ripping the half-inch draw parts on the table saw, making sure to run enough stock to have a few extra test pieces just in case. At the miter saw, I cut the sides to length, reset my stop block, and then cut the draw fronts and backs. After cutting the first one, I set a pair of sides in the case and check the width of the front piece. A little wiggle room is good here. I set my Craig jig for half inch stock, which with this model includes adding this little step. I also adjusted the stop collar on the bit and the clamp. Then I could drill two holes on each end of the front and back pieces. This time I used one inch pocket hole screws and some glue to assemble the boxes. I used a clamp to hold things tight, ran in the screws, and repeated it for the other side. With the box assembled, the last thing to do was to check for square. If one of the measurements was off, I added a clamp to hold it square until the glue dried. While the boxes were drying, I started on the bottoms. These are cut from quarter inch ply and they'll slide into the grooves in the case box. I started by ripping them to width leaving about a 30-second inch of play on either side of the case. Then I reset the fence and cross-cut them to length. I put an eighth-inch roundover bit in my table router and eased the top edge of each of the drawers inside and out. I always have to think when riding the inside of a box to make sure I avoid a climbing cut. The way I remind myself is it's right to left if the stock is on the near side of the cutter and left to right if it's on the far side. Before assembling the drawers and bottoms, I gave everything a quick sanding using 150 grit on my random over sander. I cleaned up the faces, edges, roundovers, and both sides of the bottom. 
I also ease the edges along the long side of the bottoms so they won't catch as they slide into the grooves. Now I like to pre-drill whenever I can, so I mark the sides and backs of the drawer bottoms and drill them with a taper bit and countersink combination. If you have a drill press, you can use the fence and preset the depth. That just makes things go faster. I also used a stop on my fence to locate and drill the holes, and then reset the stop for the next set, if that makes sense. I made a jig that had a rabbet the exact size of the bottom overhang and used that to align the bottom to the drawer cases. The bottom was aligned flush to the case and the backs overhung a bit. Once the bottom was lined up with the jig, I clamped it in place, pre-drilled through the holes in the bottom and drove in several number six by one inch screws to fasten them down. You could use glue and brads, but this gives me the option to change things later if need be. I made sure to set aside a piece of half inch Baltic birch large enough to cover the entire face of the case. I can now rip that down so it was the same width as the case. With my crosscut sled I cut the door in five drawers from that blank. I marked the door in drawers so I could keep them in order when I assembled the parts later. That allows the grain to flow from one piece to the next. The door was cut first and then the drawers. The 8 inch saw curve is the same spacing I would use when lining up the drawer fronts later. To make things easier when I attach the drawer fronts to the boxes, I pre-drilled two holes in each box, again using my taper bit and countersink combination. I clamped each box to a sacrificial scrap to prevent any blowout when the bit penetrated the front of the box. I hadn't picked up my hinges yet, so I simply clamped the door in place, making sure that it was level and even to the sides of the box. I could then slide in the first drawer box, add my eighth inch spacer, set the bottom drawer face in place, clamp it to the box, and fasten them together with two three quarter inch screws. Then it was a matter of repeating with each drawer, double checking the drawer number and the grain match before screwing things in place. I had pre-drilled the location for the draw pull on my drill press before attaching the faces. Now I could drill through the drawer box using that hole as a guide, again using a backer scrap to prevent any blowouts. Now that I have my hinges, I marked their location with a knife so I could recess them into the door. I set the depth of a straight bit in my palm router and roughed out the mortise for the hinge. Then I came back and cleaned up the corners and edges with a chisel and mallet. The last thing to do was use a self-centering VIX bit to pre-drill for the hinge screws. The screws that came with these hinges were just a bit too long for the door, so I made sure not to drive them in completely. I'll replace them later with some 3 8 inch long screws. With the door laid in place, I could mark the case frame for the other side of the hinge mortise. Then it was route, chisel, and pre-drill as before. With the door in place, I could locate a good place to insert some rare earth magnets to hold the door closed. I drilled deep enough to set two magnets into the frame. I transferred that location to the door, pulled it off, and drilled a matching hole deep enough for one magnet. After a quick sanding, everything was ready for finishing. I used a water-based urethane in my Erlex spray system and gave each part three coats, sanding things down at 220 grit in between. While I was drying, I took my brass colored hinges and the screws and spray painted them black to more closely match the drop holes that I had chosen. I made sure to scuff up the hinges with an abrasive pad before spraying them. Once the finish had dried, it was time to add the hardware. The screws that came with the knobs were too short to reach through the two layers of the drawer front, and rather than countersink the head, I picked up a few longer screws and used those. Next, I added the hinges, using the 3 8 inch screws on the door. This time the screw for the knob was too long, so I used my wire strippers to cut that screw down. I have channel lock number 908 strippers, and they're set up to cut down several small screw sizes. Just thread the fastener in and squeeze. Hard. 
Once the knob was in place, I could use the half inch screws to mount the door to the case. I used some CA glue to permanently connect two rare earth magnets and let that dry. Then I added the third magnet and marked the two outside faces with a sharpie so I wouldn't mix up the polarity while installing them. I added a little more CA glue into the holes and set the magnets, ensuring that the sharpie mark was on the inside and then pressed the magnets home. I decided to keep the top from the old stand, but it did need a little help. I cleaned up the edges and the old strips that had fallen off and reattached them with some contact cement. Rather than go into all those details here, I have a separate video that shows how I make countertops and I'll add a link to that below. After removing the drill press and the top from the old case, I flipped the top over and set the new case in place where I wanted it. I pre-drilled for some number 8 by 2 inch screws and fastened the case to the top making sure that the screw heads were buried into the braces, but that their tips did not penetrate the top. After setting the new cabinet in the mobile base, I wrestled the drill press on top of the stand and bolted it back in place using some 3 8 inch bolts, washers, and nuts. While inserting the drawers, in order so the grain flowed from top to bottom, things felt a little snug. So I removed each drawer and gave the tabs a coat of paste wax. The drawers went back in and operated smoothly. Nothing left to do but load up all my stuff. The compartment on the bottom was designed to hold my corded drill since it doesn't really have a home. Everything else gets placed into a drawer for now. And I'll just have to live with the stand for a while before I decide where best everything's going to live. Having a series of shallow drawers will make finding my bits and accessories much easier. Things won't get lost in the back, and once I figure out a good system of what goes where, my work will flow much easier. And hopefully I won't save so much junk. I'd love to hear what you guys thought of this video. Was there something I could have done differently, more efficiently, smarter? Drop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, maybe give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And, you know, if you haven't already, maybe hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified each time I put out a new video. That's it for today. Have a great day. Stay safe. See you soon. Take care. Having several shallow drawers will make finding my bits and accessories much more easy. If you could only hear the air conditioner and the chainsaw going at the same time.